I'm Rick Kaler. Thanks for joining me. Well, if you're working from home and feeling distracted, isolated, displaced, less productive, you've got a lot of company. In a recent survey, Morning Consult asked full-time workers working remotely about the downside of their new work environment. The top five negative aspects and the percentage of respondents reporting them were, number one, distractions, lack of focus, 40%, but tied with that for number one, feeling isolated, also at 40%. Next, blurring between work and personal life, 34%, and adjusting to new work dynamics, 34%, another tie. And in fifth place, lack of technology at 18%. When I read this, I felt much less alone in the struggles I faced since my company shut down our physical office on March 16th. Our staff of eight, uh, of them, three live in other states, and they already work, of course, virtually. We meet with around 50% of our clients virtually, so virtual meetings for our company really pose no disruptions. More disruptions for our clients that weren't used to meeting virtually. Of the five of us that work locally, two had home offices with the technology already in place. Two were able to move their office computers to their homes. We've always supported flexibility in work-life balance, so integrating home uh, schooling and personal schedules into everybody's work days wasn't a problem from our standpoint of allowing our associates flexibility. Um, most of my associates felt they were almost as productive working from home as in the office. Almost all found themselves working more hours due to uh, both the accessibility of their workspaces, which were just down the hall rather than a 20 minute commute, and the volume of work that rolls in when there's a financial crisis. Now I was a bit of a different story. While I'm accustomed to working on the road, I had no dedicated office space in my house. Working from my dining room table on a laptop and an iPad, well, that didn't work out so good because I missed my scanners, laser printer, webcams, high quality mic, my three screens, and uh, my high speed computer. Well, also having the occasional cat tail drift through my Zoom video didn't support my need for privacy, professionalism, or focus. Neither did having a view of my yard and all the uncompleted projects that were calling out to me. I quickly checked the boxes for distraction, lack of focus, and lack of technology. For me, the solution was to continue to go to my office, safely isolated as the only person there, until I could set up a workspace at home and install the necessary equipment. Given that the whole country was in need of the same technology components as I, it took over two months to get everything in place. For me, the worst downside of working from home is the isolation. While meeting virtually with clients and remote peers was normal, the loss of connection with my local co-workers, whom I really view more as friends and family than people at work, wasn't. Combined with the sheltering in place needed to keep my family and me safe from the COVID-19 virus, the isolation wins hands down as the most impactful downside. The virus is still spreading in our rural community. I suspect we'll be working and meeting with our clients remotely for some time yet, especially as many of our clients are older and in the high-risk category. I also believe that virtual meetings are preferable to in-person meetings where everyone wears masks and stays six feet apart. 
A year ago, a consultant I engaged told me that in order for the company to thrive, we need to go virtual. Despite all the virtual aspects we already had, I really resisted the idea of becoming a totally virtual financial planning firm. Today, we are one. If we can figure out how to maintain the energy, synergy, and connection that working personally with colleagues provides, it's possible we may never return to our offices. While I remain doubtful that that's going to happen, working remotely will be our company's reality for the foreseeable future. Thanks for joining me.